Hello fellow bibliophiles and welcome back to Blatantly Bookish. I'm Marissa and this video is a bit later than I would have hoped for. I got pretty sick on New Year's Eve and I haven't been able to film or edit at all since then or read really which is quite a shame and I'm finally feeling better and looking forward to reading some more now. Around the same time my six-year-old MacBook computer that I filmed and edited on since the inception of this channel kept crashing and it was clearly time to get a new one. So I'm using a whole new editing software and it's been really quite the project for me. And you probably have also noticed that this background is very different looking. I promise I'm in the same room, but the background has been revamped for today and hopefully the foreseeable future. We moved the black bookshelves into the bedroom and I reorganized these light colored bookshelves and I got my very first reading chair. It's this cozy blue wonder. I just love sitting in it and reading in it, although I only started reading in it today because like I said, I've been sick, but it is just so cozy and comfortable and I'm so happy that I now have it. But anyway, today I would like to discuss my reading goals for 2020 and in the process reflect a little bit about my reading from 2019. My first and most important goal that I want to set this year is to refrain from putting too much pressure on myself with these goals because that is how I fail spectacularly at them. And last year I did just that. I set too many specific goals that caused me unnecessary anxiety. I'd like to be very clear before I enumerate my failures that failing at these arbitrary goals I set for myself does not mean that I failed at reading this year. I measure reading success not by the number of books I read or by the amount of books that I read off of my physical shelves, but by the quality of my experiences with the books that I did read. And I did read some fantastic books this year, including some new favorites and really a surprising amount of rereads for me. So I will be making and posting another video soon all about some of my favorite reads of 2019, so please do look out for that one. One of my only somewhat successful goals from 2019 wasn't explicitly bookish. It was to make a bullet journal, and I actually did fill it with quite a bit of bookish content. I'm rather impressed with myself that I maintained a journal for the whole year, and I'm in the process of making another one for 2020 because I enjoyed it so much. I don't think that I really made any bullet journal videos last year. There are already so many of those types of videos out there on YouTube, and there are even whole channels devoted to bullet journaling. So I think they've got that covered. But I did post some drawings from my bullet journal on Instagram, and I'll continue to do that in the coming year. So be sure to follow me on Instagram if you want to see select drawings, as well as plenty of bookish content. And thank you to all of those who helped me out on Instagram recently. I posted some prototypes of the collage that I was going to use for the cover of my 2020 bullet journal. And I was really torn between these two beautiful collages. And your comments were so helpful. They really highlighted the benefits of both collages and I couldn't choose. So I ended up making a third option, which is a combination of the two. So this was the 2019 cover. I still really like it. And this is the 2020 cover. So yeah, you can see that I really combined the two different collages that I posted on Instagram and I'm quite happy with the way it turned out. And I'll show you some of the inside. It's quick, there isn't much, I'm still working on it. So there's a table of contents, which is boring. And there's the 2020 cover page there all metallic and there's a future log which has nothing on it because I have no future. Now it has nothing on it because I haven't filled it in yet but when I do it'll have holidays and weddings and all sorts of other things that are coming up in the coming year. And then I have books read. Yes I've already finished one book in the year of 2020, and that is The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. I've never read the His Dark Material series, so I'm really excited to get to read those. I've heard great things about them, and the first one was amazing, so I'm excited to start The Subtle Knife. 
I also have buddy reads. I already have some of those there and reading goals, which I have not filled out yet, but I'm excited to fill out after filming this video. And then I have some books for review. I was given review copies of certain books that hopefully I can read before they come out and talk with you about them. Also video ideas, I just haven't gotten to that page yet. Finances, boring, you don't wanna hear about those. Some blank pages that I have yet to fill in. And then I'm working on this January calendar. You can see it is completely blank because it is still a work in progress. Haven't finished coloring over here yet, so. Yeah, so like I've said, this past year, I failed spectacularly at my goals, and I learned that the more structured my goals are, the more they feel like chores. For 2019, I made a list of very specific books that I wanted to get to, and I read one of them. It was Framley Parsonage, and it was fantastic. In fact, I finished it in December. It's not that I don't want to read those books. I do, I do still wanna read them. I just built them up in my head to be these grand endeavors and it never seemed like the right time to tackle such tasks. I made a TBR jar so that I would read more books off of my shelves, but I didn't even use it for one month. Its purpose was to alleviate the anxiety of selecting books from my shelves, but in reality, it just made the task even more anxiety provoking. I only ended up reading five books off of my physical shelves out of a total of 47 this year. Just to clarify, if you look at my Goodreads, it will say that I read 52 books, but I lumped all of Oscar Wilde's plays together when I was counting and Goodreads separated each of Oscar Wilde's plays. So 47, 52, same difference, same ballpark. The more structured I make my reading, the less I want to stick to that structure. I feel torn between what I really want to do at the time and what I wanted to do in the past, and still do want to do, just not in that moment. At the same time, if I have no structure to my reading, I seem to put off the books on my shelves in favor of library books or books that I pick up on a whim that I don't always enjoy. Not that I always enjoy the books off of my shelves, but oftentimes I really do. The books on my shelves have been carefully curated and are generally books that I'm going to enjoy. People do five-star prediction videos. Well, I've never done a five-star prediction video, but the unread books on my shelves are all four or five-star predictions. If I didn't think I'd like a book, I wouldn't own it. So there's this fine line between planning my reading and making lists and having aspirations and some general direction to my reading, while also allowing myself to pick up the book that I feel is right for me at the time. Being a part of booktube has made me so much more conscious of my reading and has enabled me to learn more about myself as a reader. Last year, I thought that I needed more structure to my reading, but it turns out that that's simply not true. Another goal of mine for 2020 is not to read more, but to read more meaningfully. My reading has actually been steadily decreasing for the past few years, even though my awareness of books and general bookish appetites have only increased with the advent of booktube in my life. It's hard to tell if this decline is a general trend. In 2017, I read 65 books. The following year, that decreased to 55, but I also moved in with my then boyfriend, now husband, and made the transition from being in school to working full time. This year in 2019, I only read 47 books in comparison. I feel like my reading in 2019 was dwarfed by some major life events though. This year I switched jobs, I got married, and I moved apartments, so really a lot of big life events that can diminish reading time. I would like for 2020 to be a lot less hectic, and I hope that will enable me to focus on my reading a bit more. But my goal isn't just to read more books, although that would be nice, but reading more isn't everything. Reading meaningfully is to me. I want to read books that become new favorites and stick with me long term. I want to read books that I just can't put down, that remind me why I love literature and the written word. I want to read books that impart meaning and wisdom in my life and that I just can't stop talking about. One way to do this would be to read more, I suppose, because I would have a statistically higher chance of finding great books when I have a larger sample size. But you don't have to read more to find great books if you carefully curate your selections and listen to recommendations from people whose bookish tastes you trust implicitly. 
So I want to continue what I consider to be the most important aspect of my reading, and that is to measure my success by the quality of my reading experiences and not by the quantity of books I get through in a year. My next goal is to commit to my buddy reads. I've had some really great buddy reading experiences on booktube in the past, and I want to work in 2020 to make more memories like that. I want to do my best to make my buddy reading this year full of fantastic experiences, the kind where we have meaningful discussions about the themes and characters of books, get emotional about the plot together, and so on. I usually do spoiler-free discussions and reviews on my channel, so it's wonderful to have an outlet to discuss spoilers and analyze the book on a deeper level with someone. The best buddy reads I've ever had happen when we keep pace with each other and communicate regularly. I already have a few buddy reads lined up for 2020 that I'm excited about, mostly with Katie from Books and Things and Jenny from Bookish Shenanigans, but there are plenty of other booktubers and commenters out there that I'd love to have the opportunity to buddy read with. So if there's anything you'd like to get to that you maybe have seen on my shelves or heard me mention that I'd like to get to, or perhaps something that was from my 2019 video of books I wanted to read in 2019 that I never got around to, please just let me know. Feel free to reach out to me on any platform listed below. The comment section, email, Instagram, Goodreads, Twitter, there are so many ways of communicating with me and they're all linked down below. Another goal in 2020 is to only buy books that I've either read and already enjoyed or plan to mark up and annotate. I don't want my physical TBR to get out of control, or at least not any more so than it already is. My shelves already have enough unread books to last me at least four or five years at the current rate I read. I calculated it. And that doesn't include rereads, of course. The reading world is one giant, never-ending TBR, but my shelves really don't have to be. Of course, I never want my physical TBR to reach zero. There's something magical about having all the possibilities that a physical TBR represents surrounding you on a daily basis. But if my possibilities were to become as large as my local library, let's say, that magic would turn into anxiety very quickly. I've always done best with a small selection of books to choose from. When I transitioned from picking up books in the YA section of my local library to the much larger adult section, I became seriously overwhelmed. And I don't know if I've ever truly gotten over that overwhelming feeling that comes with so many options. I loved the library in dental school because it was a health sciences library. They didn't have vast amounts of fiction, but they did have a dedicated leisure reading section with a few bookshelves. They had a decent selection actually, and they always had new fiction displayed prominently. I love books, so with a small yet curated selection, I can always find something I'm interested in. So anyway, I'd like to keep my TBR relatively small, and I want to acquire books that I loved reading so much that I either want to reread them or at least have the option of rereading them. It's nice to have read books on your shelves as memories of that particular reading experience in your life. It's like when you bring back a souvenir from vacation. Even if it's only a pair of earrings or a mug, every time you use it or wear it or look at it, the memories of the trip flood back to you. For me, books are the same way. I see an old favorite of mine and I remember where I was reading it and what was going on in my life at the time. And the memories just flood back to me. My last goal isn't exactly a goal, but it's just me looking forward to some of the very exciting reading projects going on this year, hosted by other fantastic booktubers. Lucy from Lucy the Reader is hosting the hashtag Classics Community, which is an initiative to read more classics in the year of 2020 and cultivate a community in which to discuss them. I love reading classic literature, but I did not read much last year. I read 13% Victorian fiction in 2019, and I read 21% classics. And I'd really like to see that number increase to 30 or 40% in an ideal world. So I would love to be exposed to more bookish souls who also read classics. This is a very flexible, year-long reading challenge that you can interpret however you'd like, and I look forward to participating in it. I can't tell you how tempted I am to make a 20 classics I'd like to read in 2020 video, but I'm afraid it'll put too much pressure on me and that I simply won't end up reading them. I'm also excited for another reading challenge that's happening this year, A Year of Louisa May, which is being hosted by Kate Howe and Megan Hannett, two booktubers who I love immensely. And they are hosting read-alongs of Louisa May Alcott's books in 2020, 
I believe they've actually already started in the last two months of 2019. I don't know if I'll follow along with their read-alongs, but I might explore Louisa May Alcott's work in my own way this year. This past December, instead of rereading Little Women with them, I read a nonfiction book about Little Women. But then I saw them discussing Little Women, and now I really want to reread it in 2020. So anyway, I may or may not stay on track with them, but I love Little Women. I was actually lucky enough to take a trip to Orchard House a few years back, and I've always wanted to read more by Louisa May Alcott. So this readathon seems like the opportune time. I'll link all of these announcement videos from Lucy and Kate and Megan down below in case you want to hear more about these exciting reading opportunities happening in 2020. But those were my reading goals for 2020. They aren't very specific, but I think they've helped me reevaluate my reading priorities for the coming year. Would I love to do some more specific things like read more classics and read more books from my shelves and finish certain series that I've started too? Sure, but I know that I will have a fantastic reading year, even if none of that happens. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. What are your reading goals for 2020? Do you find that having more specific goals helps or hinders your reading and why? And if anyone is interested in buddy reading anything in particular with me, please let me know. Hopefully we can arrange something. And if enough people are interested in a specific book, perhaps we can make a little group or I'll host a read along or something like that. So thank you all for watching. I'm feeling very optimistic about my reading life in 2020. Happy reading, and I look forward to seeing you in another video soon. Bye!